So once you've signed into Scratch, you'll see that any of your projects will show up in your stuff right here. And I'm just gonna press inputs and outputs, and I'm gonna press C inside because that's how you wanna edit your Scratch. Okay, we created a single sprite with a single background for this particular lesson on inputs and outputs. Okay, so what you'll see here is I'm gonna start from scratch and begin with an event block. Remember, an event block is the command that you're telling the computer to do, basically to start your program. From there, you want your sprite to kind of say something back to you. And that's always a look in Sprite. So you're gonna come up here to the look block and you're gonna see the one that says, say hello for two seconds. Now, as we've practiced in class, you always wanna check line by line your code so that it's working. And see, it is working, it's saying hello, and the code has run, and now it has stopped. Now I'm gonna save these green blocks for a very special kind of post lesson session. Now what I wanted to do is I want my sprite to basically communicate back to me a few more fun things. So again, I want to create a command that has my sprite talk to me on my particular workspace. So I'm going to pull over another say hello. I'm going to change the saying that I want the output to be, and I'm going to run my code. And you'll see over here, both lines of code are running well. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is inputs. So what happens when you're telling a computer to actually do something where you want to put in information that you eventually want the computer or program to process and then output it to you? We call that in Scratch a sensing block. And we want it to ask us a particular question. So you wanna pull over the ask block and you also wanna pull over the answer, but you're not gonna put the answer block anywhere near the ask block because eventually we're gonna learn this fancy term called concatenation where you're gonna put that within another block of code. So you're gonna pull over these two blocks of code and you're gonna wait. So notice I have that first block of code, okay? And I'm gonna change it to how are you feeling today. Now I'm going to run my code just like I normally would. Hello, I am the genius fortune cookie. How are you feeling today? And you'll see down here that now it's asking, the program is asking the user to input some data. And that's what this is asking. And that's correct. All right. Now eventually we want that data. So now the program storing that data and then we want that data to be outputted at a different point. So we're gonna save that for later. That's that answer block, okay? Now, if we go into looks, you're gonna pull over another say hello because this deals with the output. So again, you have output, output, input, and now we're gonna combine input and output. So we're gonna come over here to the sensing block again, okay, actually, Sorry, we're gonna come over here to the look block again and pull over one of these say hello blocks. All right, once you have that there, all right, you're gonna see that I've done a lot of what we call concatenating and data strings, okay? So I have all of these lines of code and now I want the answer to show up. So see how I'm gonna connect this into that block and even though it's visual coding, the background is JavaScript. So I'm gonna run the code, it says hello, He's Mr. Genius Fortune Cookie. And now I'm gonna say, fine. And see how it gave me an output right there? It gave me my answer right back. So I inputted fine, it processed it when I needed it to output fine, okay? Now, that might seem like a lot of information, so let me go a little bit slower. We have an event block that starts us off. We want our sprite to kind of have a conversation over here. And then we're going to ask for a sensing block, which is an input block, okay? And eventually we're going to put the data strings together, the strings of data of these words, these texts, and have the sprite communicate with us and interact with us, okay? So now I have a say hello, and we're gonna go into this cool thing 
called operators. And in operators, we have these logical statements. These are logical operators, okay? We wanna pull over the one that has the two texts that say join apple and banana. So everybody see that? And you're gonna stick that right in the say block, okay? Join apple and banana from operators and we're gonna put it right here. Now I want to put that there and let's say I just want the answer to go there, okay? Do you see how I've linked all these wonderful blocks of code and now I'm gonna run it. So it says, hello, genius fortune cookie. Now I'm gonna input an answer and it says, wow, I think happy. Now that sentence doesn't make sense. So I want to change that. Wow, I like that you are feeling, and then I'm gonna leave a space and then I'm gonna get my answer, ready? Hello, I'm Genius Fortune Cookie. How are you feeling today? Awesome. Wow, I like that you are feeling awesome. Now you can hold this for a longer second. You can add three seconds so that way you can read the full sentence. Now let's say I want to add more answers, like add more. So what I could do is connect another operator within the second block give the answer and then if I want it to look good for like English purposes I'm gonna do this watch what happens hello I am the genius fortune cookie how are you feeling today amazing wow I like that you are feeling amazing do you see the period right there now since there's an extra space I want to delete that extra space and now watch when I make this a larger code block, you'll see. Hello, genius fortune cookie. How are you feeling today? Amazing. And see, we have the proper structure of a sentence. So the code is working really well. So now I'm going to go back into my work area and I'm going to show you one other cool thing. Now I'm going to come down here on my work area and I'm going to add an extension called text to speech. When I add this, I'm going to make it accessible to anyone who might have reading or hearing some kind of accessibility issue. Whenever you're working on a computer, you want to keep in mind anyone who might have a learning challenge. Okay. So now I'm going to add these cool blocks, which you'll see right here, text to speech, because I've added that extension and I'm going to pull those blocks over and you're going to see that I'm going to say the exact same wording that's in the say block. Watch what happens. Hello. Do you hear it? The computer actually spoke back to me. Now, if you want to continue, you can pull over three more of these or duplicate these blocks and put them underneath each of the say blocks. So if I do that right now, you're going to see that I'm going to write down Let's see what happens. All right, let me increase the volume so you can hear it. Hello. I am the Junior Fortune Cookie. Okay, so these are some fun options to add on to your current code. But our purpose today of this lesson, especially for those of you who are absent, is for us to go through inputs and outputs. Okay, and doing some cool strings and concatenations, wonderful thing in computer science. When you're ready, you're gonna press, actually when you're ready, you can change the title of this and press save now. And when you're logged in, remember boys and girls, all of your projects are saved in that wonderful little scratch folder at the top. All right, see you next class.